Hi guys and girls, welcome back to my channel. I do hope you're doing well. And guys, here we are for yet another sit down sham with episode, but our first of 2024. Can you believe we are already sitting down? We are already sitting down and I thought, you know what? What can we do as a sit down topic for the first of the year? I was thinking New Year's resolutions, everything like that. And I thought, hmm, how about New Year joys and worries? What are we looking forward to in 2024? And what are we worried about? And as we all know, the Sit Down With Shan series is a little safe community. There is no judgment over here. We say what we feel please or offend nothing ever on this channel is to cause offense we have little discussions down in the comments you guys leave interactions to try and help other people and leave your tips and tricks that's what sit down with shan is it's all about tips and tricks on how to conquer life and it's many many hassles and troubles and situations that we may come across and as i say if you're a regular on the channel you will know that we cover pretty much every single topic that you can think of but I always do need some suggestions so if there is any other topics that you want me to discuss have a look over on the playlist if I haven't covered them leave them down in the comments box or drop me an email guys or head over to the Instagram all things Shannon X and all of that jazz we can sit here and we will do these every month we have been doing them every month for I want to say I'm coming into the third year with the sit down with Shan series sit down with shan was kind of the first big series that i wanted to do on my channel and then obviously last year we introduced scandals with shan this year there is a new series coming in um i think you guys are gonna like it if you sent your questions in you're gonna know what this new uh super secret series is all about but i'm not gonna rip it rabbit i have my new cup which i think is gonna be my sit down with shan cup apart from when it gets to the colder months and we bring the Christmas mugs out and the Halloween mugs. But this is what I got for Christmas. This is the P. Louise Gemini Energy Sippy Cup. And I think, you know what? Why not have a little bit of Gemini energy when we're doing this sit down with Shan? So, of course, I have eye pan to hand, eye pan to hand, eye pad to hand. That's what I meant. And let's get in with our first sit down with Shan discussing all things New Year joys and worries. Now I was trying to think guys of a different setup for sit down with Shan because obviously you guys know I have the green screen which I'm going to try and work around for scandals with Shan but I was thinking what else could I do for sit down with Shan and I thought there's actually nothing else I can do. I want to keep one series to the bed and I feel sit down with Shan is like as I say, the safe place, the place where we chat and cozy up. So sit down with Shan is staying on the bed. We will be staying here and probably switching around. You know how sometimes I can be in this position or sometimes I might think halfway through, no, I want to go to that side. We take it how we get comfy. Um, scandals with Shan will be over by the dressing table. Obviously, we'll have the green screen up now. And then monthly favourites, because now I've got the basket for it, if you're an OG, you will remember that some of my very first videos, I used to move the big silver trunks at the bottom of my bed and put my dressing table chaise lounge there. The only thing is, the glasses reflect the light. And yes, you're probably thinking, Shan, you've gone back to your normal glasses. We're going to swip and swap with these glasses, guys, because one minute I love my new ones, then I don't. And today I'm not really vibing with the new ones. So we're staying with these ones. And then probably next video, you see, I'll have the other ones on again. So swip and swap, swip and swap. You know what I mean. But I'm thinking I might do monthly favourites, moving the boxes out and putting the chair to the back of the bed and just being able to sit there because the bed I always like to make sure is made to perfection with all my cushions so you're gonna have a nice little backdrop and yeah we'll see how it goes but i'm so excited to try and work around the green screen for scandals with sham but that is a whole nother episode guys that is a whole nother episode what we're here for is sit down with sham this month so as i say i will always ask over on my instagram which i used to have two i used to have a lifestyle and a food one i have since they're not deactivated but i don't use them anymore it was too much for me to try and keep on top so what i have now is all things shannon x it's just one instagram for all of us i want to try and build that up as i say we've only been going for i think it was just before christmas early december i started it try and build that up and get that to where we was with like lifestyle and food um that is where i do all of my stories so when i have these types of videos coming up and i ask for your interaction it will always be over on there 
Also, if you send me any emails or you want to be in contact or leave comments that are maybe not public on the video and you want to do it more privately, my business email is always down below as well. With that, when you drop me a message, sometimes I'm always like, hi, sometimes I like to see a little picture of you guys, only if you're comfortable with, because I do like to put faces to the name. And then what I will do is I'll add you in and once a month when we do all of these i will send a big bulk email everyone's blind copied in so no one gets all your personal details and everything like that and i'll say this month's topic guys new year's if you want to get involved send over before i don't know friday because i'll be filming sunday and everything remains anonymous so there is a few ways if you would like to get involved in these types of videos that you can do so uh yes it's either instagram or the emails if you want my lovelies so Kicking it off, my lovely says, for my 2024 goals, I have lots of little goals and big ones. Focusing on my mood board for 2024. Now, I would love to get into mood boarding. I feel next year, because this is the last year of my 20s, you're going to be like, Shan, you sound like a broken record. But for 2025, I actually do want to do like a mood board, vision board, like something that's actually stuck up. Like um, me and Dan have been looking at like giant cork boards to just stick random bits on but I thought we could actually use that for a vision board for both of us so I would definitely love to get into that next year. The main goal this year is to work less on my nine to five because it's so toxic and drains me from doing the things that make me happy and I hope then that the thing that makes me happy will turn into a job somehow. Absolutely love that. Life's too short babe and at least I can try it. Hope you have an amazing 2024. I hope you have an amazing 2024 too. I definitely feel this year for myself and a lot of people that I've spoke to seems to be I call it the year of the reckoning people might think that's a little bit extreme but I genuinely feel that this year it seems everyone's got such positive aspirations and goals and it's all about making the time that we have here camp because as I always say guys we might not be here for a long time but we're sure as hell are here for a good time and we want to try and cram as much as we can as many memories have as many laughs and not so many damn days and I love the fact that you're focusing on things that make you happy because at the end of the day, you have to do something that makes you happy. And I just feel in this day and age, we can all get so caught up with things and it becomes mundane and routines. But if we snap out of that and we're like, right, so we have this amount of hours at work, this amount of hours for me and this amount of hours of sleep. That's how I see it. I look at my day and I think, well, I'll be sleeping that to that. I'm at work that to that. And then I have like that for me. That is the time that I need to focus on what do I want to do, whether that be my PT class or getting a walk in, whether that be editing or filming, cooking, me and Dan catching up on a series. Like it's all about that balance and trying to find the rhythm and a routine once again, because I do feel over Christmas routine goes out the window, didn't it? Everything just goes a little bit a wire and the routine goes and everything's hustle and bustle and when it comes to the new year it is a nice chance to reset and recharge and think what do we actually want to do so i cannot wait i would love to actually see or hear about your mood board so if you would love to give me a message i would like to see that because i i see vision boards and like my backgrounds on my computers at work are like pinterest mood boards but i've never had i would say confidence or maybe the artisticness to actually design one myself so yeah i'd love any tips or tricks on that and here's hoping 2024 all we can do is try it mum and nan they always say you never know unless you try you could do something and fall flat on your face but then you could turn around and say well at least i know i think having the oh well it didn't work out is maybe better than having that questionable what if sometimes and yeah i hope 2024 is an amazing one for you my lovely one of my lovely says a disney world for my 39th birthday i love this so me and this person you will probably know them very well they also have a youtube channel and um, likewise um my friend on the first question youtube i feel is not just a place to watch videos now especially as a content creator it is such a wide platform to be diverse yes you can create videos yes you can create reels you can do community posts like youtube is evolving i see and especially in terms of like the community posts i do like to keep you guys updated on that whether there be an extra upload or something's running a bit late or if we've had technical difficulties um sometimes if i'm doing polls on there i get your guys reactions i do feel youtube is like bringing it around and especially because you can do like the shorts which are basically like reels on instagram tiktok videos in a way i would love to try and branch into reels and tiktok but i'm slowly getting there okay i'm gonna start off with 
for the basics of YouTube and we'll see how that goes. But yeah, it's all about exploring and that. But Disney, you'll know, as I say, if you follow their channel, Disney for your 39th birthday. We're actually 10 years apart. So they are celebrating their last year of their 30s and I'm celebrating my last year, my 20s. And we speak on the regular and it's like we're always exchanging tips and it's like live life to the fullest because you never know when it's going to be your last and I am so so excited to see the content that is about to come for these people because oh, I love Disney I've never been to a Disney world I've not been like Florida or Paris or anything like that so I live through watching these people's videos and I am just so excited the preparation has begun and I can't wait I absolutely can't wait it's going to be a blast now and this is something that is a worry of 2024. Worried for my finances. I need to get control of my spending and earn more money. Right. I can totally relate to you on this because in this ever-growing world where everything is going up and the cost of living is going up and everything, you ju it just seems to be rising out of control. I, myself, do need to control my spending. I am the first one to admit that I work hard and I play hard. That's the saying, ain't it? Work hard, play hard. I work hard and I like to enjoy nice things. But there is a balance to where you have to see what you can do and what you can't. Because for me, I've always been very fortunate within my work and I save and I always try and make sure I have enough put by for a rainy day. And as you guys know, whatever money I earn off of YouTube, I don't touch throughout the year. I do not touch that money until come the end of the tax year. My accountant says what I need to pay. That is my remainder. And that actually just goes all on my travels. So I can still reinvest the content for you guys. Um, so whether that be my broad holidays, my log cabin, it all goes back in the channel. So I know my first year I had a little bit of a splurge. I treated myself to a few things. And I think every year I will just get a little something, like as a little milestone. Last year I got my Doc Martens and boots, if you remember. My first year I got my Vivian Westwood bag. This year I'm feeling like it could potentially be looking into a bit more tech. I might try and invest into a second camera. I'm not entirely sure yet. Or maybe a bit of jewellery. Jewellery or a camera. I'm a little bit undecided at the moment. But majority of the money will always go towards my travels because... I love creating travel vlogs. You guys seem to love travel vlogs. And we all know this year I keep banging on, I want a blooming camper van. I really, really do. And all of these things are just expense. I want a camper van. I want to move. I want to still live this life. And um, you have to kind of prioritise. So it's little changes. For me, I would say get a budget planner. I got everyone a budget planner at Christmas. Me, mum, dad, Dan, we all got budget planners because I think it's very easy to see the money come in and then you see it out, out, out and you think, what on earth am I spending this on? So the budget planner that I have, I have, once I get paid, I put it in, I write down my fixed outgoings, the stuff that I know will absolutely come out every month. So that might be direct debits, rent to mum, money for my phone bill, etc. like that, fuel for the car. Then you have a section for like variable. Now I only got these off of Amazon or Etsy. If you just type in like budget planners, you can get so many. You can get like saving goals related. You can get the one that I can't get to grips with because I don't normally deal in cash is the cash stuff in envelopes, which I think a lot of people actually do. But I personally don't deal with cash. So that doesn't relate to me. So I'm a lot more just writing it down to see what comes out of the bank. On your variable expenses... That will be stuff like takeaways, going out, weekends away, um, subscriptions you could potentially put in there. I put my subscriptions in the fixed, however I did actually reduce a few of my subscriptions last year. I cancelled Hey You, I cancelled my Discovery Plus, so now all I have is Disney and Netflix because they're the two apps that I tend to watch most of my stuff on. Um, and you really do realise where your money goes. So, for example, at work, me and Dan would go to Costa pretty much every day. That's fine if you're going just for one coffee, maybe once or twice a week. If you go to Costa and Starbucks, guys, you know a coffee's well over a fiver. So that was a tenner a day. Sometimes we might want a toasty each. You could be spending 20. Sometimes you could easily be spending between 50, 60 to 100 pounds a week on lunches. That's just baffling because you think it's a coffee and we have coffee here. Guys, you know I have two blooming coffee machines. 
So we, at the moment, we've been two weeks back into work and we haven't been to Costa or Starbucks yet. So I would like to see at the end of the month actually how much we've saved on that front. Um, we have our coffee in the morning. I get up, I do the coffee here. Um, and I've always said, if need be, I'll put them in the travel mugs and I can bring like a nice little decent cup of coffee to work. We also used to then have our snack man. And you guys know, me and my snack man, I used to have cheese and bacon turnovers. Oh, the best one guys i'm getting hungry and salivating just think about it but that again could sometimes be anything from four to ten pound in the mornings so when you add that up on a weekly basis and then you look at it over a month that is a lot of money so we haven't done that for two weeks we had one treat last friday where we went and we had some chips for lunch but what we are doing on the lunchtime now is we're going for walks so number one we're saving money and number two we're getting some steps in trying to combat getting a little bit more fitness trying to save a bit of money and not eat the junk food and as i say we've been meal prepping dan does the oats i tend to do the lunches and then dinners we just wing and see what we have in the house and make a little thing we also try and do weekly food shops now so there's a bit more of a plan where i'm going with this on the saving side i would say get a budget planner and see where there's bits and bobs that you can maybe cut back on we've kind of gone all in like because we said at the beginning of the year oh we'll still go for coffee maybe a couple of times a week we actually haven't been <laughs> we've literally been walking most days so that we've cut out and we said once a week maybe say a 20 pound budget a week that could be right we really fancy a snack man that day or actually we do fancy that coffee and it's just kind of like limiting yourself without completely restricting yourself and another thing as well i think um we used to be partial to a pub crawl we haven't had a pub crawl so far of the new year so what we said was most weekends when it was our weekend obviously he has two weekends away and we have two weekends together we would always be out but what we are going to do is we had bits and experiences bought for christmas like virgin days and trips out so with them the main day itself is paid for because it was a gift and all you might need is a bite to eat or maybe if it's a bit of a way away a little bit of a hotel so we have got days and trips planned that are in essence already paid for i think that is a good way potentially of if you still want to go out and do something have a look on virgin experience days and um, red letter days voucher even you can get so many great deals at a discounted rate and in essence the day's already done okay it might be a little bit of an outlay at the beginning but for example um, me and mama g we love marco pierre white restaurants you can go in there on a normal day on a normal menu and your meal could be 150 quid if you go on virgin experience days you can get the exact same menu the exact same thing and everything that for sometimes between 60 and 75 for two people so that's like 30 to 40 quid each just under it's things like that where you kind of have to think smart and you guys you know me i love a virgin experience day yes i do and i feel those are the things where if you buy them on an offer oh my bracelet's pinching my skin ow i've got this new bracelet guys that i told you about but you know i've pinched my skin I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to just pop it down there um but yeah so ways of like having days out which maybe are not paying the full price um have a look on the I think they're like price comparison websites if you're going to like theme parks or days out in London. Potentially you could look if you was going to London getting the combined pass. So instead of just going and thinking oh we might do that and might do that. You could get there one or two and both and then you've got to pay two full admissions. Where maybe I think you can get the pass and it doesn't all have to be done on the same day. You can like go at different times. That I'm not 100% on but I'm sure it's all on the um are they like Coca-Cola days out or like merlin days out you can get like three or four attractions and it's like a reduced rate stuff like that um also utilizing everything you have in your cupboards i we haven't had a takeaway this year as of yet so oh no did we have a takeaway i feel we might have had one pizza that was the first week after we had a bit of a very stressful day let's just say and we got in late and i was like oh, i really don't want to cook and then again with that if you have um any insurances due meerkat compare the meerkat do that guys because you get your meals and your cinema two for one half price 50 percent off pizzas again stuff like this um taste card is another one i've never personally looked into taste card but i know that's the thing where you can get deals if you eat out or get takeaways 
and I think it's just seeing where the little things add up. So as I say, a coffee a day might not seem a lot, but when you add it up, it is a lot. So it's all about little bits bringing in, which will then tell you to bring your finances in. And that way, it will then start to become a routine and you'll be more thinking, do I want to pay £5 for that Costa coffee? Or I could go to Tesco's, get a box of Costa sachets for, say, 2 50 with five or six sachets in, get a nice little travel mug and make that in the morning if I'm off to work drink that as I go the only thing I will say with the sachets they're just not as frothy well that's not a problem because you can get a little milk frother for three or four quid from Tesco's froth it up get it nice and creamy and it's like you've got a Costa on the go so yes I would definitely say Amazon and Etsy for like a little budget planner and with that it will slowly fall in place and I think once you start getting into that routine and you start to see actually how much have I saved this month you can then think which this is where I struggle with I will see how much I've saved and I think well I can treat myself no 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 because then you just defeat the object sham but if say you saved 200 pound one month I might look at that and think well you know what we really did fancy that meal or we really did fancy that 40 or 50 pound right well I'm saving three quarters of it and that's going to be a treat don't get to the point where you're so fixated on saving and controlling your finances that it controls your life. Because I've been down that path too where I've been so strict to myself and I just end up resenting. Because I think I work these hours and I'm actually having nothing to enjoy. I think the whole thing is the work-life balance. You need to, you have your job to provide the life that you want and you need to enjoy that life that you want. There's no point working all the hours and then not having anything to enjoy. So, and another thing I would say there's a lot of free stuff around London or maybe whatever town or city you're from. Galleries, museum, parks. Literally, guys, this is probably the best time to start getting out and getting walking because come the summer, it might be a little bit too hot, but you'll be acclimatised to it. A lot of people, I think, see the coldness and think, Phew, I'm not going out in that. By the time you start walking, 10, 15 minutes, you'll be warmed up. And again, you're getting the steps in. You might be going to a new area you've never been before. You're improving your health and also it's free. What might it cost? Maybe a little bottle of water. But yes, any problems or anything with that, my lovely, or if you want any tips, I can send you links. Just send me an email and I will be happy to do so. Ah, oh, one of my lovely says, hi, lovely. Baby is due on March the 6th, so it looks like poopy nappies for me. <gasps> it's not long. It is not long. I'm so, so excited for you. I hope you have everything. I think, I pretty much think you will have everything prepared. You seem a very organised person. You seem to like know what you need, tick all the boxes. I am so, so excited. And that will be here before you know it, guys. That will absolutely fly around. Oh, got a little quartet of the dogs in the background. Um, that will fly by. Absolutely fly by. And then a new little addition. How exciting. One of my lovelies says, oh, they would like more empties on YouTube every three months if possible. And Primark try on hauls with Mama G. Now, the monthly empties... Empties will still be coming every six months. So with that, it will be a spring summer empties and a winter autumn empties. However, monthly favourites will also include empties and all of the stuff that I've been loving. The monthly favourites, they will never go away. That is another series that I used to love watching them and it kind of reminded me of old school YouTube that just kind of fell off. So maybe my channel's a little bit outdated, but I love doing them videos and I hope you enjoy them because we have a roundup of everything I like in the month, stuff that I have gone through that are empties. And you know what? There is actually quite a few empties for January. So uh, stay tuned for that. And the Primark try on hauls with Mama G are well and truly coming back. We are kicking back the mum buys my Primark haul and I buy my mum's Primark haul. We're also going to be looking into the £30 outfit challenge. We're going to try and get the... Remember when I used to do the weekly food shops? Obviously, I don't think we'll be able to do £30 now because there's three of us. So it might be £40 weekly challenge, which I think could be doable for three of your £40 a week. We'll see how it goes because obviously portion sizes and we just need to give it a little jazz. But there will be some returning series that kind of dropped off from last autumn because everything got a bit hectic. But yeah, stay tuned. They will all be coming around, my lovely. I am quickly just going to go get the door because I think I've just heard Mama G pop in and then we will be right back, okay? Right, we are back. One of my lovely says, taking time for me, getting back into some exercise, even if it's just going for some 5k walks. This is the thing. So it doesn't have to be you throw yourself into fitness because 
I've been there, done that. And you can get so consumed and it takes over your life. And then when you actually want to live a life, you kind of feel like, oh, well, I can't do that because of that and that. So it's just little baby steps. And a lot of people say, yeah, but it's hard to get back into it. And I get that. I fell off the wagon last year. I got on the wagon. I fell off, I got on. It's all about moderation. So for me, if I get in from work and it's not raining and there's a little bit of time before Dan comes in to then doing the dinner, I'll pop out for a little walk. It doesn't matter. I'll be like, you know what? Off we go, getting them little steps in. As I say, getting some steps in on lunch. Um, just making little efforts of thinking, oh, you know, instead of popping in the car to go there, I'm actually going to walk. For me, when my car gets parked on a Friday, unless I have to, I don't use it until Monday for work. If I go out anywhere, I would rather walk, jump on the bus, jump on the tube. If it's like obviously going into London, I can't walk into London. But I do try and walk as much as I can. You guys know for my gym, I walk just over two miles to my gym and then two miles back. I might walk three miles into town. I like to get out because it is the little steps that build up. And as I say, I know it's 10,000 steps a day. I know. I have hit it a few days. I'm not going to lie, I'm not hitting it every day. Some days, if I just do my walk on lunch, I might get between six to 7,000. If we then do a walk at lunch and of an evening, that will be my 10,000. Some days, I might not get more than 3,000. I do set a minimum of trying to get at least 3,000 steps a day because I actually looked at my step count for last year. And if I wasn't doing anything and I was just in work, I'd be lucky to do over 1,000 steps which is, for me, that's really bad. And I was like, I can't slip back into that routine. So I thought, you know what? Minimum 3,000. So I'll come home from work. I'll check my count. If it's like a 1,000, I'm like, you need to get yourself up and you need to go for a walk. Or I might just start running around the house. Like, I do think walking is very beneficial. And I'm not talking like power walking and running and everything. Just a nice, steady, brisk walk. Like something that you can get constant rhythm for. Something you can feel your heart working. You're starting to get a little bit of a sweat on. Sweat is good. It means it's working. So yes, take some time for you as well, darling. I absolutely love that. One of my lovely says we have bought our first family home. Congrats. Very nervous, but so excited. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year to you too. How exciting. A new home. That is something that's on the cards. I say on the cards, before I'm 30, I would like to have moved out and potentially have my camper van, okay? I'm not dropping that dream, guys. <laughs> I'm not dropping that dream of a camper van. Um, I started looking at homes the beginning of last year. Saw a few, realised, nope. I then started to look a bit more towards the end of last year. I saw one, it weren't meant to be. Um, I'm still on the hunt, but I'm very, very particular. I know what I'm like and it's not somewhere I just want to be for a year or two. I think the stress personally of moving will absolutely cripple me and I only want to do it once. Honestly, if I could just move once and be done with it, I'd be happy. I don't think that's going to be the case. I feel like this might be my first place on my own. I want to buy my own property and then down the line, um, we may have a joint property, but this one, it still needs to be right for me. I don't just want to move for the sake of moving and because that's what people think I should do or that's what is expected or that's what I have to do. No, I don't want that to be the case of when I move. I want to move because I find somewhere that I like, um, something that's not too far from work, not too far from Mama G, um, still commutable to other places and everything like that. But yeah, it is a long uh, process, a long thing, a long process and I try, if I find somewhere, and it might need a little work, I try and find the positives. But I need to remember myself, I could not live in a building site. I could not buy somewhere. And I don't mind a property that needs renovations, but I could not live there in the renovations. You guys know me, I my OCD would go through the roof. I have to have structure and I don't think I could be on that. So some places I've seen and they might need a little bit of work and some I've seen and I think that needs more work than I could give it because also you have to think of time. It's not just a case of knocking down walls and everything like that. Obviously, I'd leave that to professionals. I'm not going to be knocking down walls. But then it's like the decorating and I think I need to have the time to put into the decorating, to put into the accessorising, which was why I went down the path of new builds at the beginning of last year. But they were so small so small you could not swing a cat in it they showed me one of the built-in wardrobes and i looked at dan and i was like 
that would not even fit like my Doc Martin collection in and they're calling that a full built in wardrobe and the sales agent just said to me well maybe you need to get rid of some of your boots at that point I was done I was like oh you, you got, you're not telling me to get rid of my boots mate absolutely not so that was why then towards the end of last year I was looking into older properties um homes I want to try and stay away from flats and apartments because I want a garden I want my garden you guys know from the moving out series I've got all of my barbecue bits except the barbecue and yeah I really would love a garden so maybe I'm a bit limited on that front because I do want a house of some kind if I wanted a flat or apartment I could probably move out tomorrow with the ones that are popping up in the area but it's not what I want and also I want something that I can potentially make an investment in, whether that be down the line I rent it out or resell it. Um, I don't know. But yes, so, so excited. And uh, keep me updated how it all goes and oh, how exciting. Now, on the other hand, my lovely says, we got burgled a few weeks ago and we're going through a time as a family when praying for some joy in 2024. First off, I'm so, so sorry that it's happened to you. I've, that is probably one of my biggest fears. I just, I couldn't imagine it. And as you say, take the time, rebuild as the family, talk. Don't let anything build up. With instances like this, people deal with burglaries as such very differently. Some people might be expressive. Some people might be quiet. Some people, they might not seem like it bothers them. But I think something like that will affect everyone in their own way. So just be patient with one another. Um, if people feel like they need to talk and there's things not quite right, speak about it openly. It's... Um, touch wood nothing like that has ever happened but that is like my biggest one of my biggest fears like i've already said whenever i move like security is going to be that's the first thing that i would want in the house like cameras i don't know if i would i say a ring doorbell a lot of you guys say to me shane should get a ring doorbell i don't know if i would because i don't know if i would get obsessed you know i don't know if i'd be like constantly watching it i think if i had a good cctv cameras around me like maybe a camera looking down onto the front bit or whatever the back inside i would want cameras and alarms inside i've already said like security for me is a big thing and i think it's because where we've always lived ground floor i don't know i just feel like ground floor you're a lot more vulnerable i know in a house you still have ground floor but you have upstairs here we've always been on one floor and i think you know what it is i do think security is a big thing so as i say i'm sending all love and prayers to you i do hope you're okay and as i say take the time everything will slowly fall in place and as i say 2024 that will be your year my lovely okay that will be your year oh i got cramp oh you know when you've been sitting in a position i'm like ow 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 right let's have a look oh i'm excited to start everything fresh as i had a bad year last year i was betrayed by an ex-friend and i'm looking forward to hopefully going on a nice holiday you know what leave all the negativity behind in 2023 have your holiday move forward let them see you living your best life because you know what there is nothing that aggravates someone more than seeing someone carrying on and being happy living life so this ex-friend, you may never have thought of a life without them, but by you succeeding and living your life and carrying on, that will that will get under their skin because they'll think, oh, and they will realise that they messed up. If they betrayed you, then that is their loss. I just think there's a lot of pettiness in this world and no one has time for that. No one actually has time for that. And I think, you know, you have the saying like, what was it? kill them with kindness and bury them with a smile i mean the killing with kindness i pick and choose when to use that burying with a smile i think a smile you can always have in your back pocket because a smile can be so interpretable to different people for different reasons but i think carry on living your life because before you know it they may come running back to you and you know what that is the greatest satisfaction because people will come running to you when they've realized that they've messed up and they will need you before you need them i am a firm believer of that and i just think no hold your head high and if you don't want anything to do with that person be like mm, sorry you uh, betrayed that trust ex-friend you can live your life and i will live my life and part ways i'm probably quite savage like that i mean mama g says to me sometimes you are very brutal shannon and i'm like mm, i just I, I don't i think we have one life and i'm not gonna waste my time 
spending it trying to pander to people who have no relevance or bring no relevance to your life if someone isn't going to impact your life for a better or make it more enjoyable then to me i don't see the point if all you're going to bring to my life is drama and negativity and hassle adios so long there's no need for that i don't have the time or energy to be entertaining stuff like that i have bigger and better things going on in life of which we all should channel our focus into the positives the things that cause the negatives are the things that drain us and the things that make us question things and affects our mood and it's not worth it it's really not worth it guys i think if it don't make you happy in life gone and i think that's my mentality for 2024 if there is nothing positive to come out of it if there is nothing that's beneficial or could help me or broaden my horizons by any chance in the new year then no my life i'm very content with my life at the moment plodding along planning things out time with mama g social time relationship time gym time getting back into that i'm happy where i am at the moment and yes there's going to be ups and downs but you can't allow the downs to keep affecting the ups you have the ups that outweigh the downs and you know what i think just carry on living your life as you would do carry on living your life and you know what it's that loss my lovely one of my lovely says count me in please i've had a really bad time in 2023 i'm sorry to hear that my lovely and i hope it's a better one i have four kids and five grandchildren that i'm not allowed to see as their mums don't like me due to me speaking my mind but i've never done a bad thing to get that i know that i never see them now i don't like that I don't like this is a thing that really I don't like people who use children as weapons because children depending on age are still impressionable they're still young they still in essence are having to be minded by an adult and when adults like things like that like not letting people or family see them like you're their nan and I think if you as you say you've never done anything it's just the fact that you speak your mind and i think it's well and good speaking your mind but as long as there's that line to where it doesn't affect other family members children etc like that that's fine if you're if you were saying right i speak my mind and i speak it in front of the children and la la that i'd be like oh maybe the parents would be a little bit concerned because it would be what are you saying in front of the litlands could it be something that has an adverse effect could it be something that gets twisted and manipulated to then in essence make it seem perhaps children are saying stuff when actually they could be saying it's you for example i think you are more than welcome within your right to speak your mind as an adult but as long as it's not subjective to the children being in presence as i say because kids are impressionable and the last thing that children need to hear when they're growing up is comments about people that are not particularly nice or true because that can leave an impression and that can be something that is so damaging down in the long run so as i say that i really hope that it gets sorted for you and maybe it could be for 2024 to sit down with the children for example and say like why am i not allowed could it be due just the fact that you speak their mind is it that your children don't want you to see them or is it their partners like establish where the gripe is coming from really and maybe if they don't want you to see them on your own perhaps could you see them with your child for example like try and find a compromise because i don't think you should miss out especially if you've not done anything bad or said anything bad around them or the children it's sometimes people just get bees in their bonnets and it really is it really is annoying to say the least my lovelies one of my lovely says love you loads love you loads too seeing my son coming back from holiday after getting engaged oh my goodness this the engagement the video the photos cute made my christmas have not seen him so happy for years celebrating his 40th eek so does his partner this goes to show it is never too late or too old or anything at all to start again i feel in this day and age we write ourselves off. I'm the first one to admit it. I'm like, this is the last year of my 20s. I'm writing myself off before I get to 30. A lot of people say to me, Shane, your 30s are your best years. 
Look at this, 40s. They're celebrating their 40th and they have found their love and they're engaged and I absolutely love it. And as they say here, it just goes to show there is a perfect person out there for everyone, no matter how long it takes. And of course, seeing you getting to be where you want to be. That is the be all and end all. It doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter where or how or whatever. I do feel there is someone out there for someone. Someone for someone? Someone for everyone. And it can be the most unexpected timing, person, situation, anything. But I do believe everything happens for a reason. And as we move forward in life, things peace out and maybe work out how we wouldn't have thought they would. But that is the roller coaster that we call life, I'm afraid, my lovely. In all the years I've been watching you, <laughs> I have never seen you happier than you are with Dan and sharing everything together. This is what I mean, guys. You never, never know. If you've been an OG with me, I was in two long-term relationships from 15 to 22 and then 23 to 27 and a half-ish. And I feel like they kind of, it's hard because they always say you have like three types of love or relationships in your life. You have like your high school one, which was my high school. You have the second one that's kind of like the one that teaches you things and then the third one is the one that come out of nowhere and this came out of nowhere as I say we're not going to delve into it because if you've been an OG you know the whole story and we don't want we don't want to cloud 2024 this is going to be a good year and I have a lot of comments saying Shan you're happy now like you don't see Dan full on you see the side of his face or a quick glance or the back of his head that's how it's going to be for a while and I understand that it's frustrating we were speaking the other day and it was like, maybe we should just never have shown him. But he is a part of my life and he does actually really like to get involved in the videos you would have seen in like the Christmas Bake Offs um, in Iceland. I vlogged out there. I did say like, I didn't know if I wanted to vlog and he was like, vlog away. But I tell you with Iceland what was really hard was vlogging for the channel. But then we still wanted to vlog for us. So there's like a separate video for us where obviously you see him in full and everything like that so i'm like you're almost doing like two lots of videos but who knows where we'll be in the future but it will just be a side glance or you might get a bit of his beard or you might get the back of his hair and you will always hear him rabbiting in the background that you will always hear on here because uh yeah he does have a lot of ideas he created merch the design if you saw of iceland um he has all these ideas for the channel and ways to grow and video ideas and yeah, it's the support it's the support I didn't know I need. Of course, Mama G's always been here from day one and I never really had that support previously in relationships with the channel. The channel was always seen maybe as like a hindrance, but my channel is my baby and he knows that full well and he's fully supportive and uh yeah, it's nice to see that you guys see the difference. And as I say, he goes through comments with me as well and he does get happy with it because it's like I must be doing something right like these people have been watching you for years because you guys have known me when did I start this COVID so that was three and a half years ago I want to say I think we're coming into our fourth year now guys three and a half four years and I knew Dan for about four and a half at my workplace so you've kind of all known me roughly on the same path the ones who have been with me from the beginning and yeah to see you lot seeing the difference over the times and as I say seeing how I am happier in the things I'm doing and I'm like guess what guys we're going here or guess what I'm out there of course there's still memory days with Mama G to come by I'm very very excited for the channel if we uh had to sum up 2024 for me I think my worries are what would my worries be not doing the last year of my 20s with a bang like I think I want to go out with a bang I want to do as much as I can go out as much as I can but within reason we still need to be adult like because if we want the camper van we want the house we we need to be able to uh think straight and narrow you know we need to be on par um and the joys of 2024 just making more memories there is so much to come in 2024 that I'm like, I look at my countdown app and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. There's something nearly for every month. And whether that be me on my own, 
me with Mama G, me with Dan, me with Dada. There's always something about. And um, yeah, it gives you motivation to keep going. And I think the main thing for me at the mo moment... Blah, 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 blah. I was trying to say moment motivation. The thing for me at the moment is keeping the motivation. That's what I meant to say. Um, and I do that by my journaling. I absolutely... I'm in love with my journaling at the moment. You guys know from the white got for my Christmas, the three big black books. They're like essays in themselves, but I absolutely love that. Focusing in on my course. Um, I think 2024 is going to be a good one. And on that note, guys, I'm going to take a little refreshment and round this first episode up. So, my lovelies, that is the end of the first sit down with Shan for 2024. Guys, let's hope 2024 is a good one and you know what even if we have down days we all have down days and we're all going to be there together okay there is no no one's on their own please don't think you're on your own over here but as i say if you want to put any more suggestions in for what you want to chat about leave them down below drop me an instagram message leave me an email anything you want please do so but guys if you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below. And leave us a comment. What was your highlight you feel coming for 2024? Okay, let me know. Guys, take care. Stay safe as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.